Susan Doyle, in her History of Illustration, says that illustration is visual communication through pictorial means. To illustrate comes from the Latin lux, an apt definition, as we contemplate illuminated manuscripts this week. Illustration is one of the oldest forms of communication, as can be witnessed by the cave paintings at Luskow and Chevet. We can theorize that people were trying to communicate about hunting grounds or telling where it was safe to travel. The Book of the Dead from Egypt is a series of scrolls which began as imagery which was only available to monarchs. The monarchs were the only people believed to be able to partake in the afterlife. However, over time, the imagery was transferred to coffins and finally papyrus, where commoners were able to partake in the image. The Bayou Tapestry is an embroidered cloth nearly 70 meters long and 50 centimeters tall, which depicts the events leading up to the Norman conquest of England concerning William, Duke of Normandy, and Harold, Earl of Wessex, later King of England, and culminating in the Battle of Hastings. Upon the tapestry are illustrated battle scenes which seem to glorify William the Conqueror, who would be the eventual victor of the Battle of Hastings, it is thereby considered one of the first works of propaganda. Here we have the world's oldest book, found approximately 60 years ago and written in a lost Etruscan language. It contains six pages of 24 karat gold, including text and illustrations of a mermaid, a horse, and rider, and soldiers. The illuminated manuscripts were manuscripts in which the text is supplemented with decorations such as initials, borders, and miniature illustrations. In the strictest definition, the term refers only to manuscripts decorated with gold or silver, but in both common usage and modern scholarship, the term refers to any decorated or illustrated manuscript from Western traditions. Here we have the initial, the initial is the large letter that you'll see at the beginning of some texts. It was very common in the illuminated manuscript tradition, and they would spend a lot of time decorating the area around it and really making elaborate patterns to, to pump up the imagery in the letter. The initial and the diminuendo work kind of like mu music in that the initial is really large, and so the diminuendo will make the, the design of the typeface grow smaller and smaller and smaller as you go throughout the page. Now, illuminated manuscripts were performed mainly by scribes in monasteries. Um, they were important in that they began the culture of the book or codex rather than the scroll. One of these manuscripts was the Edwine's Psalter. Um, and in this volume, um, there were more than one artist really working on, on, the, on the book. So as you go throughout the book, you can kind of see different styles popping up here and there. Some, some of the work, um, especially in the illustrations and the pictures, um, becoming very individualistic, which is an interesting thought when we're thinking of one cohesive volume that's made as one book of only that existence. So here we have an initial of a, of a T with the following in text, all, all much smaller, um, a similar sort of thing happening with the D on this page. Um, and in this illustration, we can see uh, the individuality of these characters in, in, the, in the Psalter. Um, and they are very much different than the next page of characters. Um, so you can really sort to get an idea of one, how long it would take to make this volume, how many people you might need to have working on the volume to have it finished in any, any amount of time. Um, another uh, illuminated manuscript 
Um, the Irish claim the most beautiful of the of the illuminated manuscripts. If you go to their webpage for the Book of Kells, um, this is a ninth century manuscript which documents the four gospels of the life of Jesus Christ. So here we have um, a lot of the large letters with that very elaborate patterning um, and just really colorful, punchy pages. The design just really, really hits you. Um, in, this, in this slide we see a character worked in with that with that frame around the character and all of that elaborate patterning in that frame and a bunch of little illustrations kind of uh, really encapsulating the identity of that character. Opposite of that, we have just this patterned piece. So when you're looking at this piece, uh, you might be thinking to your assignment, because this, is this is essentially what you're going to be thinking about, this bounding box around the letter that is for your first name. Um, so, as you can see from, from these images, um, there were multiple scribes. They worked in different styles and they kind of, some of them were in the same book, some of them, you know, different populations, different countries. Um, but they didn't all look the same, despite the fact that, you know, they're highly touted as these religious objects. Um, consistent throughout the different illuminated manuscripts, however, were the elaborate pattern, the idea of the, in, the initial and the diminuendo, um, and the palette seems very similar in that it's mostly these earthy colors, um, which probably had a lot to do with the pigments that were available to the artists at that time. But as you approach your own letter, uh, you may like to keep the traits of the of the initial and the diminuendo, and that sort of color palette in mind, just to be speaking that same language. Um, for more information, please feel free to check out the Catherine McDonough movie uh, and the diagram on the illumination process, which are posted later in the coursework. Thank you.